in this recording, I will explain two key points. One, given a group action on a set X, what is the orbit of X? I will show you how to find the orbit of a group action based on John Fairline's text 16.8 and exercise 16.4. What is the orbit of x? If g x on a set x, then for each element x in the set x, orbit of x is equal to the set consists of g cap x for all g inside the group g. A word on the notation used. In John van Lines text, it is denoted by G times X. Consists of all the G cap X for all the element G in the group G. Here is the example I'm going to use. Suppose D4 X on the set X where D4 is a symmetry of the square consists of rotation 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, anti-clockwise about the center of the square. Mu1 and mu2 are vertical and horizontal reflection. Delta1 and delta2 are two reflection in the diagonal. And x is taken from the square, consists of vertices 1, 2, 3, 4, side x1, x2, x3, x4, and two diagonal D1 and D2. Let's compute the orbit of 1. Orbit of 1 consists of all the G cap 1, but all G belong to D4. So let's look at how does G cap 1 look like. So row 0 cap 1, where row 0 is the identity element of a group, so row 0 cap 1 is 1. How about row 1 cap 1? Row 1 is rotation 90 degree anti-clockwise, so the vertex 1 will move to 2. How about row 2 cap 1? Row 2 is a rotation of 180 degree anti-clockwise, so the vertex 1 will move to vertex location at 3. And row 3 cap 1, row 3 is rotation of 270 degree anti-clockwise, so vertex 1 will move to vertex in location 4. How about mu 1? Mu 1 is a vertical reflection. 1 will move to 2. Mu 2 is a horizontal reflection. 1 to 4. And Delta 1 x on 1, where delta 1 is a reflection along the diagonal D1. So, under this reflection, the vertex 1 will move to 3. Delta 2 cap 1, where delta 2 is a reflection in the line along D2. So, under this reflection, Vertex 1 stay put at 1. So I can write next. Let's look at orbit of S1. S1 is a red side there. Let's look at G cap S1. Row 0 is a identity element of G, so cap S1 will give me S1. Row 1, cap S1, where row 1 is a rotation of 90 degree anti-clockwise. So under the rotation, S1 will move to S2. Row 2, cap S1 will give you S3 after rotation of 180 degree. Row 3, cap S1 will move S1 to S4. Mu 1 
is a reflection in the vertical line by setting the square the leaf S1 fix mu2 is a reflection in the horizontal line by setting the square so mu2 cap S1 will be S3 the other one is the reflection on the line D1 so your map S1 to S2 the other two is a reflection in the line along D2 so your map S1 to S4 now if you collect all the G cap S1 you find that they are S1, S2, S3, S4 so I can write orbit of S1 is the set consists of S1, S2, S3, S4 let's look at another orbit let's say orbit of D1 consists of all the G cap D1 for all the G inside D4 now rho 0 cap D1 is D1 since rho 0 is identity element of D4 rho 1 cap D1 so after rotation D1 map to D2 rho 2 is a rotation 180 degree about the center so after rotation 180 degree D1 move to D1 rho 3 is a rotation of 270 degree anti-clockwise about the center so the image of D1 after the rotation is D2 now mu1 cap D1 D1 after reflection will back to D2 mu2 is a horizontal reflection and your map D1 to D2 the other one is a reflection in the line D1 so your map D1 to D1 the other two is a reflection in a line D2 your map D1 back to D1 again so orbit of D1 consists of only D1 and D2 here is a overview of all the orbit orbit of 1 consists of 1 2 3 4 orbit of S1 consists of S1 S2 S3 S4 and orbit of D1 consists of D1 D2 notice that orbit of 1 is the same as orbit of 2 the same as orbit of 3 same as orbit of 4 and orbit of S1 is the same as orbit of S2 and so on orbit of S3 and orbit of S4 orbit of D1 is the same as orbit of D2 notice that all the distinct orbit are disjoint so you can find that distinct orbit are disjoint and you also note that the union of this orbit is the set X that's the end of the recording